This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Are you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. Everyone looking fabulous yeah. as always. Uh, I wanted to get straight to this because I know a lot of you are waiting with bated breath. We do have an update to the Kanye West story from yesterday. Adidas announced they are terminating their partnership with him due to his anti-Semitic rants. This means they will now stop all production of their Yeezy brand sneakers. It's a deal worth $1.5 billion. In a statement, Adidas said, Kanye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful, and dangerous, and they violate the company's values. So with Adidas ending their partnership, here's the question. Is Kanye canceled? And I'd also like to add, did Adidas win this one? Because in my mind, the timing is very sus. How so? Too long. <laughs> Uh, Adidas didn't win this one for me. Adidas waited so long that the comments, their stocks plummeted, the uh, celebrities turned, and they still waited until after the Monday news cycle. To me, this feels like they gave in, not that they stood up for Kanye. Am I glad that they stopped it? Yes. Do I think they took way too long? Yeah, I do. I really don't think they won. I think when the uh, talk started about the actual founder of the Adidas brand and his uh, Nazi ties, then it really uh, questioned the foundation of the company, Correct. Um, what they really stand for, and if this is something that they were really willing to tolerate. So I understand. I didn't understand when you said um, in terms of the timing, yeah. if it was like trying to ride the stock prices or what, but I do understand what you're saying now. Yeah, I just think it was way too long. And do you agree? And do you think Kanye's canceled? Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about way too long, then Adidas should have canceled Kanye years ago. Because I think it was offensive when he said slavery was a choice. Amen. Several years ago, I think it was offensive when he told everybody that Kim Kardashian had an abortion against her will. I think there was many offensive times that they could have canceled. That's a great so call. So now is a good call, just like any of those times before this would have been a great call. That goes for all the brands. Vogue still had him. Balenciaga still did that show recently. Like, he's been problematic for a long time now. So I do think it's the step in the right direction, but it's always like, okay, guys, th this is not like a new issue. Right, right. We, we've heard this before. Let me ask you something. He's going to be leaving with, it's a $250 million deal for Adidas. He's leaving with a huge amount of cash being taken away from his income. The George Floyd family has now sued him or going to sue him for defamation of what he said, which is wrong, about George Floyd's death mm -hmm. for $250 million. Does he come back as Kanye fashion? Does he come back as music? Does he go away? Or does he stay with his 18 million fans and, like, just hold on to that? Where does he come back? I don't know where we're quantifying the fandom because um, when you think about people in terms of if you – we remember what happened in 2016 in Sacramento, um, and that was, like – a massive story. I was actually in Sacramento during that time, wow. so um, I remember that very clearly because that was the first real, like, not real indication that there was a problem, but in terms of him performing, mm. because touring is a, is huge money for right. an artist. Right. So now you have someone who isn't reliable right. for their fandom um, in terms of touring. You have someone who isn't, it has not been consistent in his the way that he conducts himself for years. So I don't know where there is to come back from, but I do remember um, a very wise Uber driver in Sacramento, California. <laughs> Shout out to Al, told me, baby, you don't learn your lesson until you lose money. And money obviously is his value system. And I think that maybe that will be a wake up call, but I don't know where he's returning to. I agree. I was like, is it gonna be a religious? Is it gonna be the school system? Cause he's starting Donda Academy. What do you think a comeback route looks like for him? I don't know. You don't it's think like, there is one? It's an odd question because I don't know where you go from here. Like, obviously, there's nobody around him that's – or no, I take that back. There are several people that were around him trying to help him out, and I'm sure that these people might have stopped at this point because now you went – you crossed, like, 17 lines. Yeah, right, right. You know what right. I mean? So I think that there were people – I'm not sure who those people are because no matter how ill behaved somebody's acting, there has to be someone that's, like, your voice of reason unless you shut them out. And so hopefully someone is trying to, like, reel him in, um, whether it's mental health counselors or anyone else. And so – once he gets that organized, we could talk about where he's coming back. But, like, releasing an album wouldn't cut it for me. I'm saying that as somebody who was a Kanye fan. So I don't know where he comes back and who he's, like, leaning 
on because I don't know who those people are anymore because they were me. They were probably all of us in college dropout. I don't know who those people that he's releasing music or clothes for are. That's a great point. I want to add really quickly. Kim Kardashian released a statement because he relied a lot on the Kardashians when he was with them. She has come out and said hate speech is never OK or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and I call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them to come to an immediate end. So even the Kardashians who always stick by their guys gone. Well, you can't stick by no, this. No, you can't s stick by anti-Semitism. I would have really appreciated more personal messages from everyone who had something to say in general. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it is important to st st say that I don't accept this type of behavior, but I think it means something more when it's not just a blanket statement that everyone is posting. Yeah. Um, when you think about Kanye, in recent years, he seems to only have respect for people who have some type of financial power. And then if he, they don't have as much financial power as he does, then he dismisses them because he feels as though he's more successful, mm -hmm. therefore that makes him more right. Mm. Um, this is just, when you asked about the comeback, the biggest thing to me when it comes to a comeback is there has to be a point of contrition. Mm -hmm. There has to be at your rock bottom that you acknowledge not only what you did was wrong, but why it was wrong. Mm. What drove you to make these decisions? Where you were, like, it has to be an, an unbearing of the soul. It has to be a cleansing because if you're going to have a comeback, there has a comeback, a comeback. A comeback. If you're going to have a comeback, <laughs> um, there has to be a side solid foundation from which you build to come back from. Mm. So this house of smoke and mirrors that Kanye has been emboldened to produce over the past few years just isn't a foundation for a comeback. No, and I, that's coming from the comeback queen, everyone. That's speaking of the comeback queen. Speaking of men with career issues, check this out. Will Smith posted pictures of a screenie he hosted for his new movie, Emancipation. You'll never guess who showed up. That's Dave Chappelle, fresh off of his tour with Chris Rock. Tyler Perry, Rihanna, and her boyfriend ASAP Rocky were also there. So we've got to ask, is Will Smith making, as we spoke, a comeback? Is Will Smith <laughs> making a comeback? If you were one of these stars, would you show up to Will's screening? Would love to hear your take on this. What do you think, Linz? I mean, what type of friend are you if somebody does something wrong and then you're like, oh, I'm going to shut you out with the rest of the world. That's why I said who's around Kanye right now. Mm. Like I said, he did 17 things wrong. But Will Smith has, by all standards, led this like flawless career that we couldn't throw any stone at him. And now he did one thing, and it was egregious. But like for all the people that had been his friend for years to disappear and not go to any screening or support any of his work, that's not a friend. That's trash. So I think that people should show up, and you shouldn't be surprised that somebody who's been in the industry for like 20-something years has is having ties. people showing up. And I think they can all have a conversation if they're real friends about hey, here are the steps that I would take if I were you, if he asked. Otherwise, maybe he has someone else he's talking to. Uh, did you think it was surprising? I agree with you. I think at some point friends are there forever. But do you think it's weird that Chappelle, I don't know, there's something about Chappelle right coming off of Chris Rock and then going to Will Smith. No, well, no conflict of interest I there. I think friendship circles happen all the time. Yeah. We can relate to there being a divide in a group, and it's between two people, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone has to be sucked into that. When you think about what it must be like to truly be friends with Will Smith, I'm sure that he is a friend who is active, yeah, yeah. making sure that he's supporting as much as he's being supported. Sure. So I don't think that anyone who, especially not that he has a roster of this is what I've done for you, but I'm sure that a lot of people are sitting around being like, when I was here and Will did this, you know, yeah. like they're relating to their experience with him. So of course they're going to have somewhat of a support system. Yeah. I also don't like, like, just because someone has a problem with somebody, like, I don't like when people want me to get involved with that. It's like, that's your issue. And if I build Separate. a whole other relationship with this person, I'm not cutting them off because you have an issue with them. I'd rather figure out how you guys can have a conversation and never you guys don't have to be friends again, but like have a conversation about how you can be respectful. Mm, yeah. Like to he me, didn't I slap hate people are like, yeah, don't. He didn't um, slap everybody. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Like so, so Dave Chappelle has probably been friends. They're black comedians, not a million of them. They've probably all been friends in the same circle for like decades. True, 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 true. Interesting. Let us know what you would do, you guys. Write us on YouTube or the app. We're going to meet in YouTube and have a chat between the breaks. So join us if you've never joined us. It's very unfiltered. Coming up on DVL, they're not your average baseball team. We talk with the owner of the Savannah. 
bananas to find out why people travel from all over to see them play. It's a great interview. And this is crazy. A group gets stuck underground in an attraction in Arizona for hours. We're talking about our nightmare vacation stories. That's coming up next. Closed captioning provided by... It's so good. I'm gonna sleep tickle y'all. I don't take much. <laughs> You're gonna sit here and okay. be right. I, have I know y'all gonna be mad at me, but I'm just telling you the truth. You can smirk all you want. Yeah. You don't have to tell me to go. <laughs> Brad Pitt. <Sure>. Oh, <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I'm gonna come back. <laughs> Um, they come back and tired of the cancel word. I also think when I say is can you canceled, you can't say cancel with yeah. You're just a bigot. <laughs> Sorry, you're not canceled. You're a bigot. That should be a new world. Again, accountability is important Are you to me. Are people finally done? Are I'm done. We're done. Right. Canceled is a as a whole other been like context. Levels. Like I'm sure Taylor Swift fans were done with him. 15 years ago. Which is oh. that such a hilarious moment and going on right now? It. She's killing it. I'm Her album just got I released. The Swifties it. are out and, and Connie's going down. Yeah. So they're like, like, I feel like there's like tears of different people. So then um, like George Bush fans probably were done with him right. 10 years ago. How many years? And then when Connie caught him black out. people, half of them were done with him when he went on a rampage on TMZ. And, and then Harry some people Tom still accepted his music. And yeah, Harry Tubman, he went on a rampage about that $20 bill. Yeah. And then now every, so it's just like he just, he wants to disrespect everyone. Everybody equally, and now, okay, so that's why I said, who's the fan? Who are you yeah, delivering yeah, exactly. the I'm music to? Remember the Easy Music video also where he decapitates, kidnaps, and buries one Pete Davidson, which I would have sued for defamation or for inciting violence immediately. Like, like, how the universe plays out. Like, how, everyone was saying he should he, go after, same thing with Taylor Swift and everything, and both of them, I don't know, Pete Davidson has a great Taco Bell commercial. I'm not going to say he's doing the best right now. But that's funny. But he's still making <laughs> that's that point. That's exactly. not a $2 exactly. company. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, he's wearing like yeah. a, a freaking a Dickies suit and a Taco Bell commercial and probably made $1.5 yeah. And then Taylor Swift at the same time. So it's just very interesting karma, how buddy. karma is just karma. one of those things. Karma. And I think it's going to be interesting when Adidas comes back and asks for restitution hey, hey. for the Wait. rest of the, yeah, for this uh, well, big release happening. Welcome back. Have you ever had a family vacation go terribly wrong? Well, you're not alone. This family of five got trapped in a cavern in Arizona for more than 24 hours after the elevator broke. They were forced to stay at a motel 21 stories below the surface. Thankfully, they were all rescued with some family members having to be hoisted up. <laughs> so in a separate incident, a family of five visiting Disney World in Orlando had an awful time after their truck was stolen along with the iPads, Apple Watches, and more. They ended up getting stuck in their hotel without their truck and never made it to Disney. So that's so sad. What? I know, couldn't they just like walk? I don't Have you ever had a family vacation that went terribly wrong like this? I'm so confused about the, the truck in a motel underground. Oh yeah, they were, I guess they were visiting the cavern and then they got stuck so that there was l luckily a motel down there. <laughs> There was just a motel down like, there. Okay. Okay. Lucky, actually. Yeah. Okay. That's lucky. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I haven't had a horrible thing go wrong in vacation. Well, actually, I did almost break my leg. I was going to say your leg missing. Yeah, I did yeah. get gangrene in Mexico. So, uh, <laughs> But this was what came to mind was this video I posted that people were giving me so much crap about. We went, we were in Belize and we were in the jungle. My mother insisted on us going to the jungle. I am not an excursion person, okay? You I complained the entire time. My face is bitten up. Look at this. Oh, man. A 
I'm, that looks bad. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Jeray's gonna kill me. Yes. I'm in trouble. Holding on to my beer because it was the only thing that felt familiar. <laughs> yes. It was your way out. Yes, it was. It was your it way out. Do you have stories? Or have you, you've had good vacations. I'm usually like, I have dumb stuff happen. Like, we flew from New York to Vegas and then we had a connection because we were being cheap in Philly. Like, who does that? It's like an hour from New York. And then we missed our connection flight. So we ended up spending the night in Philly. It's like, dumb stuff like that happens all the time. But like, I love Philly. So like, I'm not a person that's like, oh, oh wow, it's a bad time. Like, we just went outside in Philly. You just had fun in Philly. There. And the same thing with, uh, like, I was on my way to Egypt from Ethiopia. Wow. And the connection thing happened there too, but we had to connect leaving Ethiopia and we had to sleep in the airport. But luckily they upgraded us to the first class lounge. We laid down. Karma. Tiff and I, my best friend Tiff and I were just like, okay, what are we about to watch? Even though streaming was very limited over there, we watched something, we bonded, we connected. Right. You trauma so bonded. Just, and we ended up in Egypt. So I usually just am like, all right, we're here. I'm mad for like 30 minutes. What's next? You rolled with the flow. Yeah, you what am I going to do? I'm on vacation mad? Like, come on. That's a good point. Yeah. We yeah, were there's no problem with that. No, that's true. I was in Colorado visiting a dude ranch and a huge storm came out and my whole family was loving the sound and the rain on the tin roof and my sister was out in almost a flash flood. <laughs> it turns out not great. Really dangerous. Katie, we're so glad that it's okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh my God. The CDC recommends kids get all sorts of vaccines by a certain age, including chickenpox and hepatitis. On October 20th, the CDC voted to add COVID-19 to that list. Verify viewer Jacob texted the team to ask whether the COVID-19 shot is going on a mandatory vaccine list for children. And lots of people questioned if this vote made it mandatory for kids to get the COVID-19 vaccine in order to go to school. So let's verify. Is the CDC requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, and the National Conference of State Legislatures. According to the NCSL, the CDC Advisory Committee cannot mandate which vaccines are required for children to attend school. This is determined by state law. U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, also confirmed that the CDC's decision is not about vaccination requirements, and any indication is otherwise untrue. So we can verify, no. The CDC isn't requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school. According to the NCSL, many states do align their vaccine requirements with the CDC's recommendations. But some states, like Florida, have explicitly banned student COVID-19 vaccine mandates. And other places, like D.C., didn't wait for the CDC's decision to make the COVID-19 vaccine a requirement for their students. Kids 12 and older in DCPS were required to get the vaccine this year. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back to DBL. There's no crying in baseball, but for this particular team, there's dancing, singing, and a whole lot of bananas. We sat down with the Savannah Bananas owner, Jesse Cole, but first, let's see what makes the fans go bananas. I'm gonna say bananas again. You better have some energy ready to go because we're gonna need to bring it. We do a full march, full dance. We have confetti go off, we're singing, we're dancing. We open the gates and people run to their seats. The ESPN has called us the greatest show in sports. We started with traditional baseball with all the dancing and the senior citizen dancing, the banana nanas. But then after watching our fans, even the fact that we sold out every single game and people were started leaving games early. So we said, who could we develop a faster game? So we developed banana ball. It's a two hour time game. If you win the inning, you get a point. Batters can't step out of the batter's box. There's no walks, there's no bunting, and if fans catch a foul ball, it's an out. What most businesses do, they look at how do they drive sales, revenue, and profit. We're focused on what we do to drive fans. Whatever's normal, do the exact opposite. That's been a mindset that has driven our company and driven you know who we are and what we stand for. Every night I'm wearing this and it gives permission to our staff to have fun. If the owner's running around and y'all are talking to you, why can't we all have a little bit more fun? We know we're not just baseball players, but we're entertainers. You know, whenever you do something that gives you energy and brings joy and brings fun and, and happiness, you want to do more of it. But I also have this huge responsibility to bring this to more people. I'm interested in becoming a billion fan brand. Yes! Oh my God. Please welcome to the show Savannah Bananas owner Jesse Cole. Yes, Jesse! Yes. 
<laughs> Jesse, I mean, what you put together over there, I love it. We know you're all about fans first. What would you say is the biggest ode to the banana fans? I like saying that. Well, the name, the name of our company is Fans First Entertainment. So everything we do is fans first. There's no ticket fees. There's no convenient fees. Whoa. Every ticket's all inclusive in Savannah. Literally, uh, we have no shipping fees. And even at our ballpark, we give the whole stadium back to the fans with no ads at the entire ballpark. We eliminated every ad from our stadium. And we honor all our fans. We even have a banana baby before the game where we put a baby in a banana costume and we lift them up the air and sing, Na Spanya to celebrate <laughs> our new fans. So everything's about the fans. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Banana baby, I know. I've got a million questions. It's true. <laughs> what I love about this, though, Jesse, is like the hustle because you bought the team with your wife. I'm sure there was a ton of sacrifice sacrifices that were made in order to get it to start out. Oh, yeah. I mean, we sold two tickets in our first three months. <laughs> uh, by January of 2016, you know, we overdrafted our account. We were completely right. out of money. My wife and I had to sell our dream house, Aww. and we were sleeping on an airbed with only $30 a week to grocery shop for everything. <sighs> we were down to nothing, and that's where we were. And we said we're going all in and trying to create the greatest show in sports and the most fun team in baseball. Wow, wow but that they is, had the vision. Look at that. Wow. I know. The vision and the comeback story because you sold out every game since the first season. So what's the wait list to come to a game like this? And how far have you seen people travel for these games? Yeah, it's wild. We have the Banana Ball World Tour now. We're going to 33 cities. Uh, the wait list is coming up on 200,000. So what? it's a pre-sale list. I mean, every single city has a list over 10,000 to go to. It's wild. And yeah, I mean, every night we have fans coming from over 30 states, five to 10 countries. And we had a family come up to me and said, we had so much fun at this game. I go, oh, where'd you come into town from? They said, we drove here from Utah. It was a 40 hour drive Whoa. and we're driving back tomorrow. In my mind, I'm like, what is wrong with you? But that's what's happening. <laughs> that's wow. amazing. I love how you say your slogan, whatever's normal, do the exact opposite. There's a line in Willy Wonka where he says, a little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest men. So I wanted to know what's been the best side effect of this really non-traditional but fantastic approach. I mean, everything we do is, is wild. I mean, literally, we have a break dancing coach, the senior citizen dance team, the bananas, a twerking, um, uh, a male cheerleading team, the bananas. Our guys come up to bat with their bat on fire, a player on stilts. So everything that's not normal, we go all in on. I love that. Oh, well, fun. I was on the fence of getting a banana hat because I didn't want to jump on the bandwagon. I'm ordering a banana yeah. hat right after this, <laughs> Jesse. But what would you do? People call you the Jackie Moon of baseball. You, do you get that reference? <laughs> I've heard the Jackie Moon. Um, <laughs> great oh, great reference. Uh, mostly, I think that people say the P.T. Barnum of, of baseball. You know, I, I've read every book on P.T. Barnum, Walt Disney. I mean, I'm dramatically trying to reimagine the game. I mean, that's why we now play a two hour time game where if fans catch a foul ball, it's an out. It's I, I all about the fans. So Who comes fun. up with these ideas? Do you or is it a team of people? Oh, we have a great team. But yeah, every single morning I write down 10 ideas. I've been doing it for seven years and I've had about 5,000 terrible ideas. But a few good ones. <laughs> Good. I love this guy. Unbelievable how just when you talk and show the footage. I mean, my daughter's here. She's been watching the whole show. This is the only time she's paid attention. Yeah. Yeah. She's super into it. She's like, oh, it's infectious. infectious. I know. Yeah. I can't wait to go to a game. Thank you so much for joining us, Jesse, and for making baseball fun for fans everywhere. To our viewers, you can find the Savannah Bananas all over social media at the Sav Bananas. We'll be right back. You're awesome. That was awesome, Thank you, Jesse. Jesse. Thank you, guys. Promotional consideration is brought to you by. Imagine eating whatever you want and not having to work out six times a week to lose a pound. Okay, we have another success story. Many on social media claim by using the medication created for diabetes, they don't have to lift a finger and the weight just comes right off. So the question, does this new drug that was made to treat diabetes really work for weight loss? Let's verify. Our source is Dr. Pyle Coley and the Mayo Clinic. The drug is called a GLP-1. According to the Mayo Clinic, when blood sugar levels start to rise after someone eats, these drugs simulate the body to produce more insulin. The extra insulin helps lower blood sugar levels. It also helps curb hunger and slows the movement of food from the stomach into the small intestines, which Dr. Coley says works wonders for weight loss. Well, I would say the drug works, even if you're not eating healthy and not working out. It's really across the board that people are losing 
a, a fair amount of weight, 15 to 20 percent of their body weight. Coley says there are several different drug companies that offer these injections, which are expensive, but they are not always covered by insurance when used for weight loss. In general, to get insurance coverage, it can't be everybody who wants to lose weight. So you either have to have a body mass index greater than 30, which is a BMI that you know, technically puts you in the obese range, or you have to have a BMI greater than or equal to 27, which is the overweight range, with at least kind of one um, medical condition as a result of obesity. Dr. Coley says once patients start taking this GLP-1 to keep the weight off, they need to keep taking it or risk packing on the pounds again. At this point, the medicine has been designed for chronic weight management. So the idea is to get on the medicine and really sort of stay on it, um, to help keep that weight off. So we can verify that, yes, GLP-1, originally intended to treat diabetes, can work for weight loss. Okay, so there are some side effects. Dr. Coley says those are nausea or diarrhea, and she says some patients, if they do eat too much, can get sick. She says the best thing to do is talk to your doctor about the drug to see if you qualify. With your Verify, I'm Megan Bragg. A meme of cars bumper to bumper looks a lot like traffic in LA. But according to the Post, this is an electric vehicle graveyard in France. Other posts with similar claims have been around for years, saying France bought electric cars for civil servants, but it was too expensive to replace the batteries, so they were abandoned. Using these sources, I'll walk you through what's actually happening in these photos. First up, using Revi, a reverse image search engine, we verified that this photo was actually taken in China. Verify tracked the type of vehicles seen in the images to Chinese website Baidu. The vehicle model and the green logo match. According to the website, these EVs were being stored in a lot in Hangzhou, China. An article from the South China Morning Post confirmed the lot location. And an article from website India Times about the abandoned cars says they were once owned by Chinese company Microcity, which went out of business. So we can verify, no. This meme does not show an electric vehicle graveyard in France. The photo was actually taken in China. With your fast fact, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back. You may keep a pair of sunglasses in your car, or even a pair of jumper cables, but here are some other items you should definitely keep handy that you might not have thought of. So first up, this is today's auto alert sponsored by Ox Car Care. Yeah. First up, kitty litter. It's a great way to help you get traction when you're stuck on ice or in snow. Next, duct tape. It can help you fix a number of minor exterior and interior damages like ripped seats, cracked bumpers, and broken mirrors. Razor blades can be a lifesaver if you need to cut seat belts in emergency situations. And get this, a chalkboard eraser can be used to wipe down fog from the windows. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan experience that works with your budget. So if you're looking for better car care, give them a call at 1-800-690-7547. I want to say that someone in Telluride helped Colin and I get out of the, like, a, I don't know, we were parked in the snow kind of piled around our tire. And they happen to have kitty litter in their store. They were not surprised by this at all. They just like dumped up. Snow people know about kitty litter. Snow people. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, snow I've become a snow know. person in Colorado now. Yeah, in D.C. we always had a little bit of the kitty litter. I always thought cats are going to come because <laughs> of the smell. Yeah. Uh, we want to appreciate you all. DBL is new every day. We will see you same time, same place tomorrow. Be good to yourselves. Bye, guys.